USA has answered the call of war three times within the memory of a single generation. Each time, the nature of warfare itself has gone through revolutionary changes. Before 1914, wars were primarily a matter for the fighting army. Now, the civilian has become as much a part of national defense as the armed services. Today, the productive strength of a nation is the key to its ability to wage a victorious war. In World War I, the airplane became a military weapon, adding a new dimension to warfare. And as the engineers solved the riddles of aerodynamics and mass production, the airplane could carry the war to the enemy's homeland, to his city, his factory, and to the new warrior of the industrial age, the civilian. The air war developed giant bombers designed for a specific goal to destroy the industrial resources of a nation. The bomb loads continually increased. Then came the atom bomb. In 1935, the British Home Secretary warned it is necessary to create civilian organizations to minimize the consequences of air attack. It would not be possible to improvise effective measures on the spur of the moment. Preparation must be made in time of peace. That warning was not an idle one. In September 1940, the German Luftwaffe began the air battle for Britain. Disaster had really hit Main Street, Great Britain. Busiest of the home front defenders was the civil defense fire guard. In the first 22 days of the London raids, they fought nearly 10,000 fires. This fire guard, just one of the civil defense services, became the largest part-time army ever recruited in Britain. It had a membership of over 5 million men and women. In Britain's darkest hours, home front morale was kept high by help of this kind and food and clothing provided by all the organized civil defense services. The courage and high morale of the British in those days caused Mr. Churchill to say, Hitler knows that he will have to break us in this island or lose the war. The civil and the air defense of Britain during the Blitz saved the free world in England's finest hour. By blood, sweat, and tears, the Battle of Britain had been won. And now it was the turn of the RAF bombers, joined by the United States Air Force, to carry the air war to Germany's cities and its people. Now it was the turn of the German civilians to race for shelter as the Allied planes began pouring destruction on Main Street, Germany. 1,200,000 tons of high explosives and firebombs were dropped on Germany. Cities like Frankfurt, Hamburg, and Berlin were gutted by fire because of inadequate water supply and the failure of the civil defense block groups to act in unison against incendiary attacks. The German evacuation system broke down under the unforeseen impact of 16 million people on the move. But after its early failures, German civil defense began showing better results. Despite incessant Allied bombings, the production rate of Germany's industries doubled. But it had been an expensive lesson. 500,000 people had been killed, 780,000 wounded, seven and a half million civilians made homeless, 20 million people deprived of electricity, gas, water, sanitation. No one was left untouched by suffering or hardship. This is Main Street, Berlin.
can escape the punishment of total war. Not the women, or the aged, or the children. But preparedness can cut the toll in half. Japan, too, was among the first countries to recognize that civil defense went hand in hand with the air age. As early as 1928, drills like these were held. But 17 years passed before the first mass air raid on Main Street, Tokyo. Its death toll, 80,000. Apathy and indifference had wrecked the civil defense program. Nagasaki's industry and harbors made it a fortified zone. Then on August 9, 1945, an atom bomb mushroomed over Nagasaki. to 40,000 dead, another 40,000 injured. And what of civil defense? There wasn't any. Only 400 people were in air raid shelters that could have accommodated 65,000. Years of military victories had dulled the minds of the Japanese people to the need for civil defense. We in America today are in the same danger of having our minds dulled by past military victories far from our shores. Disaster can strike, as it did here in Texas City. Enemy bombs didn't cause this disaster. Yet there were 700 dead and 2,500 injured. We met this disaster by calling on all our nationally available resources, public and private, state and federal. But could your main street cope with a death toll of 50,000 and another 100,000 injured. One atom bomb could make this and much more happen in a few seconds. In New York, Detroit, New Haven, big cities, little city, your city. This is peacetime America. The future of this main street and the main streets throughout America, the safety of our children, our family, our friends, depends on you and what you do now to help make their future secure through a strong, alert civil defense.